Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. In the last video, I grinded out and opened 500 easy clues, and I have kind of the coolest items from that opening in my inventory, so if you don't want spoilers in less than a minute, then make sure you check out the last video to see what I got first. But as you can imagine, with opening 500 easy clues, I got a crazy amount of collection log slots. I went from 728 to 795. And now, here are the items that I got. I got the Cape of Skulls, which may or may not eventually be useful for revs, the Team Cape X, which is cool because I like blue, so it kind of worked out really well, and the Flare Trousers, which means with this item, there's only two items left until I'll be able to complete every Master Clue step, the Bando's Cloak and the Bando's Plate Body. I also got the Large Spade. Um, which is just guaranteed you get it when you complete 500 easy clues. I just spent so much time grinding out these easy clues that I don't really feel like doing more clues right away, so I'm going to hold off on doing mediums for a little bit. In this video, I'll focus on doing other stuff like PVM related stuff. Wait, can I store the large spade in here? Oh, that's nice. Even though it's like, it is a clue item, but it's not a clue item at the same time. Oh, this, okay, this one goes on the cape rack. And then flare trousers, I'll put in the group storage since we only have that one to share between us. I can do two raids before I eat dinner today. So here is raid number one. We got the double herb drop, nice, nice. And that is raid number two. I would like to get more comfortable with being in the wildy because ever since they reworked the main wildy bosses, I have not tried them out. And I think a good way to get used to being in the wildy again is by starting with the demi bosses, or in this case, specifically the crazy archeologist. I would like to try to complete the collection log or at least get as much KC as possible that I'm comfortable with this video. But before we get started, we have a word from today's sponsor. When I used to skate as a kid, I always thought it'd be the coolest thing to have a clothing sponsor. Of course, I never managed to get one like most people had skated. So instead, I started making RuneScape videos and now I have a clothing sponsor. So it all kind of worked out well in the end. Today's video is sponsored by True Classic Tees, which is a premium clothing brand that makes high quality clothes. They originally sent me six of their shirts back in April. I have them all lined up on the futon over here so you can see the different colors. And I've been wearing these shirts a lot because I mean with six of them, that's one for almost every day of the week. So I'd say on average, probably I've been wearing the True Classic tees every other day since they sent them to me because I like them that much. The shirts are perfect for lounging around the house in, which is very important to me as a gamer because I do a lot of that. The shirts are just really soft and lightweight and that's really nice because now summer has started and it's getting hot here. And these t-shirts are seriously the softest shirts I've ever worn. Even my girlfriend has been asking to wear them because she likes them that much too. With that said though, the shirts are designed for guys' bodies because they're made to accentuate your muscles and shoulders, which may in turn help build your confidence. And I personally can use as much confidence as I can get. Besides just for tees, True Classic has a bunch of other items too, such as hoodies, which they sent me. They have activewear, polos, long sleeve shirts. And if you use my code MUDKIP at checkout, you can get 25% off any full price True Classic item. Or you can go to the link below in the description at trueclassictees.com slash mudkip. And my promo code is only valid for 30 days. So take a look around, you might find something that you like. And thank you so much to True Classic for sponsoring this video. My three protected items are going to be the Trident, the Tormented, and the Occult. And I'm gonna get a fourth item for the plus one, which I won't really care too much if I lose. Uh, I'm gonna get the Nezzy. It's only 50k GP. It has no negative accuracy bonuses, but has defense and three extra prayer bonus, so I think it's worth it. Here's my gear setup and inventory setup. You can uh, screenshot it and take notes if you want. And then as for the archaeologist KC, I only have 25 KC because that's all I needed for the combat diaries. But now I actually care to go for the collection log, so I'll be doing a lot more than 25 KC. To get there, I have the cemetery teleport in my POH, so we'll just enter from there, and it's a straight run south. And as for the fight itself, it is prey range, and then when he does the rain of knowledge attack, you just run out of the way and dodge that. And that's it. It's kind of in an awkward spot right now, he spawns up over here. Your crazy archaeologist kill count is 26. Cool, this is gonna be fun. I could hop worlds between kills, but that's kind of a lot of effort and I'm just chilling and editing too, which maybe I shouldn't be doing while I'm in the wildy, but I'm doing it anyways. The three collection log items I'll be going for from here is the fedora, one out of 128, which is just a cosmetic hat. 
And then the Odium Shard 2 and Malediction Shard 2, both 1 out of 256. The green one is for the Rain Shield, and the blue one is for the Mage Shield. There's three pieces in total, and each one of the pieces comes from each one of the three Wilderness Demi Bosses. This also tends to be one of the first bosses Iron Men do, because it drops Rune Crossbows, two of them actually, nice regroup Iron Men, uh, at a rate of 1 out of 25.6. So if you're starting an Iron Man, then hey, it's something to consider. You can come out here with your Ivan Staff, or your fire bolt or blast or whatever and test your luck and have a good time. Oh wow, okay, the green on the ground surprised me there. I didn't know that was the thing. Well, I just figured out something pretty cool about Crazy Archaeologist. He drops prayer pots, four dose prayer pots at a one out of 16. And I'm just now finishing the last dose of my first prayer pot. I finished one prayer pot and that's lasted me almost 20 kills, which means over the course of time, I would at least break even if not slightly profit prayer pots. I mean, of course, with a small sample size, if I just do like 50 kills in a trip, there's a chance I might not get prayer pots, so it is still good to bring a few prayer pots for the trip, but I think that is a massive discovery on my part. Hey, there's the fedora, the uh, first unique from this boss. That's the 1 out of 128 one. One of the best fashionscape items in the game. Milady. Maudkip. Mahakander. Hey man, leave her alone. Actually, I'm gonna bank after this kill because I don't want to lose that. That was a 64 kill trip and I basically used no supplies. In fact, really, I profited supplies. I mean, there was so much food I left on the ground that I got this drops. I profited a prayer pot. Um, really, the only thing that I am using up here is charges on the trident. My kills per hour is just over 50. And then as for the actual average kill speed, it's uh, 35 seconds. 30 seconds in between kills, and then 35 seconds for the kill as one minute and five seconds. So if I'm getting 53 kills per hour, then the, the math does math. I was about getting due for uh, banking time anyways. I didn't see any PKers there. Um, hopefully this guy doesn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, uh, oh wow, 666K. And the great thing about the Fedora is that you can store it in the POH, so no bank space taken up. Maybe I could like bring the Saturated Heart instead of bringing the Tormented Bracelet. That might be more DPS, but uh, I don't care. Kills are insanely fast as it is. I'm now doing this midday peak time when there's over 100,000 players online and it is just dead, man. There's no PKers, but there is the occasional PVMer, which kind of makes sense that there's no PKers because this is a terrible place to PK. It's mostly low level Iron Man that are only using three items, so you wouldn't really get much loot in the first place. It's below 30 wildy, so you can just insta telly, and it's single combat, so the PKer would have to wait until you're out of combat to even be able to attack you. Yes, there's the first thing from the boss. Uh, I guess I should leave now so I can actually bank that and know for sure that I have it. Uh, so that's 190 KC. So lucky for that one. First shard, I meant to say, from the boss, not first thing, because the fedora is also a thing. There's a shooting star. Here goes the next 30 minutes of my life. The star mining clan showed up, so I wasn't there as long as I was expecting, but I still got about plus 300 stardust. Oh, that's, that's the one. Wait, so I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with the crazy archaeologist then. That's... That's the whole collection log. Wow. Uh, so I ended up getting lucky with both of them. Let's pop open the collection log. Crazy archeologist is green. Three more collection log slots, just like that. Getting very close to 800 log slots. Huh, I, I kind of didn't want to get lucky with this one because I felt like I could just go there any time of day and be perfectly fine. It's so easy to escape from PKers. I would think, even though I, I didn't see a single peak here the whole time. Like I said, I was doing this at peak hours. There's the loot tracker from the total of 210 KC, and I guess that took me a total of four hours. And I don't think I will ever have a reason to come back to this boss. I have the collection log done, I have all the combat achievements done. Um, I gotta figure out what to do next. I didn't think I'd get done with this so fast. So I went to do some solo chambers and I got some nice loot and some white lights and more white lights and more white lights and a white light. I am back here to fish Karambons and ponder life and I got a virtual fishing level. 104 is 21.3 mil fishing XP. After spending my whole day fishing so far, it is time to go play the game again. So I want to stay in the theme of doing wildy stuff 
stuff, and next I'm going to do the Chaos Fanatic, another one of the Wildy Demi bosses. I have been to the Chaos Fanatic in the past, but as you can see by this gear setup, I mean just the diary stuff I had back then, I'm going to probably just build a new setup from scratch, although my inventory might be pretty similar. Okay, I'll buy some throwaway gear. I will buy the Archer's Helm. I will not use the regular coif. Did you know that this thing is actually pronounced like this? Quaff. 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 Isn't that crazy? I got my gear and inventory setup figured out. Uh, in the blowpipe, I have amethyst starts. Here's why I got my inventory. Looks like Spoot Dog's doing some clues, but I'll try not to show any spoilers. Uh, I might end up changing this. I'll just see how it goes because it's been a long time since I've been to Cast Fanatic. And as for the items lost on death, if I'm uh, beyond 20 wildy and killed by a player, then this is what I'll lose. If I have Protect Item on, then I'll save the Archer's Helm. And even at the moment, there's still uh, almost 100,000 players online, so I'm not sure how this is gonna go. It is kind of close to the Wildy Altar, but I'm not sure if PKers venture up from the Wildy Altar to see if people are by the Chaos Fanatic. Oh, let me show you my collection log too. I've got 76 KC already, and I have already gotten the Malediction Shard. Um, so if I get the Odium Shard, I'm just going to leave the boss and the Pet Chaos Elemental, I will just get from the Chaos Elemental. Because it's more common to get it from the actual boss. And I do already have all the combat achievements done for Chaos Fanatic, so I'm not going to have to worry about these. To get there, I will use the Gorok Teleport in my Nexus, enter the Wildy. Uh, looks like no one's here. I have my Quick Pure set to Prey Mage and Rigor. We're going to arrange Pot up, and then I will just chill here. I have to wait for the green attack, and when he throws out the green attack, I dodge that. I definitely use a lot more prayer at this boss than at the crazy archaeologist. I was using like, well, I was profiting prayer there while I actually use up prayer here. Um, I could restore my prayer at the chaos altar, but then there's PKers there and that kind of just opens me up to being attacked or to alerting them that I'm up here killing this boss. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use up my own prayer pot. And just like with the archaeologist, I could hop worlds between kills and save like 15 to 20 seconds per kill, but I'm not going to bother doing that. Chaos Fanatic has three attacks. The basic red mage attack, which you take no damage from by praying mage. There's the big green things, which you dodge. And then there's the smaller green thing, which looks like the red thing, but green. And that unequips your items, which I wanted to purposely show in this clip so that you can see. But if your inventory is full, then your items won't be unequipped. So nothing happens from that attack. That's why you want to bring foods like stews or summer pies so that when you eat the food, there's a thing that stays in your inventory. You could even go a step further and turn off Vile Smasher with the Barbarians. But I know if I do that, I'll forget to switch it back on later. It's really not a big deal. Deal, though each time I finish a potion I just pick up the bones from the boss or whatever else it dropped to fill up my inventory. Just make sure if you do that that your looting bag isn't open so it doesn't go into there. You could also use a sack of vegetables and each time you eat up a food or a potion you could just withdraw the onion or potato or cabbage from the sack. You could try using a cannon here but I don't care to make cannonballs or risk cannonballs in the wildy. And as for the drops the shards are 1 in 256 and then the cast elemental pet is one in 1,000. Prayer drains a lot fat. Okay. <laughs> um, I was just about to end my trip. Prayer drains a lot faster here than I thought it would. Dude, I feel like every single person I see in the bully, I'm just like, that's a scout, that's a scout. It's probably not a scout. It's probably someone training prayer. Anyways, uh, I need to bring more prayer pot because this was, I think, a 16 kill trip and I was doing a lot of one tick flicking too. So I'll bring more prayer pot. I really don't even have to eat any food for the boss. So pretty much all this food is like, I guess, in case a PKer comes. Uh, and there's three ways I can get out of here. I can just run south to 30 Wildy. I can go to the KBD lair and teleport out or I could just set the destination to 13 Wildy and then just teleport to 13 Wildy and uh, just use the house teleport from there, which is what I'm gonna do. Spook Dog's doing easy clues right now and she got the clue step that requires the obby shield, the, the Wildy one with the brine saber, but she doesn't have an obby shield. I do have it, but it's in that Wildy stash unit on Lava Dragon Isle, so I don't feel like getting that, but I do have enough taco, let me equip the gloves. I do have enough taco to just buy one, so I'm gonna buy that for her. Oh. I just got 30 million range XP, very cool. Oh wait, that's the one. 
That's the one, dude. Oh, wow. 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 Okay, come on. Teleport. 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 Okay, cool. It's safe. Yes. Odium Shard 1. Wow. So the collection log, it's not technically done, but at the same time, it kind of is because I'm just gonna end up getting the pet from the actual Chaos Elemental eventually. So I'm done with this at 161 KC. I can't believe it, man. This is the first time in the game I've ever been lucky before. That's crazy. Maybe I'll just go do Chaos Elemental tonight then, I guess. Uh, the only thing I need from this boss still is the pet. Although another D pick could be nice so I can store one in TOA and have the other just to have for chambers or general mining. It has also been a very long time since I've done Chaos Elemental. In fact, the last time I did it, the Osmontum's Fang did not exist. I <laughs> used the whip last time and I suspect that the Fang is going to be a lot better. My three kept on death items are going to be the Fang, Torture, and Avernic. I am very paranoid about the Avernic, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And uh, yeah, let's head out to the Chaos Elemental. Oh my gosh, dude, this is super fast using the Fang there. Um, and that is 200 KC. That could have theoretically been the back-to-back -back deep pick because the last time I killed it is when I got the deep pick, but... It was not the bat's back. The Chaos Elemental can be an annoying boss to face tank, so I like to bring it to the safe spot by the resource area. And when I get it there, I can just hit it and it won't move or attack me or anything. If you had a wildy weapon and an unlimited stack of summer pies, then you'd be better off just fighting it normally. So basically, if you're not an Iron Man. But if you are an Iron Man, you probably don't have a wieldy weapon. So in that case, I think you'd be better off doing it this way. Ellie drops three collection log items. The Dragon Two Hand, which is one out of 128. The D Pick, one out of 256. And the Pet, which is one out of 300. An important thing to know as an Iron is that you have to have been the last one to have taken damage from the boss. So if Cast Ellie aggros onto someone else that's running by, you'll have to step back over the line and then take at least one damage from the boss before you go back to the safe spot, otherwise you won't get the KC or the loot. Just to show you what it's like face tanking, I tried it out. The kills do end up being slightly faster because you don't have to lure it all the way over to the safe spot, but it's kind of slower at the same time because you get teleported and you also have to eat food, which in turn means you have to bank a lot more often if you're face tanking. Well, at least I would have to with my gear. See, it's annoying when these bots run by because then the cast elemental D aggros me and aggros them, although it would be funny to see one of them die. Then I thought, hey, maybe because the fang is so accurate, I could try it with the flinching method instead. So while the hits are slower, maybe the time save not having to run Ellie across the map would balance out. Well, after trying it, I can confirm that it does in fact not balance out, and flinching with the Fang is still slower than setting up the safe spot, and the Fang is just not as accurate as I imagined it being in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, D pick. I was about to go to bed too, so uh, I guess that's a good, good thing to wrap up the night on. So <laughs> that's sweet, dude. That's that's actually really cool. Theoretically, for like completionist, you would need a bunch of D picks. You need one for the crystal pick, one for the dragon pickaxe ornament. Wait, let me just show you um the wiki. All these different kinds of pickaxes, plus one to keep in TOA as well. Oh, and one that you'd maybe want to keep in the stash unit. Like, you could potentially want to get a bunch of D-picks on an iron, and even more D-picks to charge up the infernal pickaxe. For Chaos Ellie, I end up doing like a bit over an hour, so I was averaging 19, 20 kills per hour. And I want to go back and look at a uh, Chaos Fanatic. I forgot to show that before. Ignore this stuff, it's not really completely accurate. Um, plus this is from like the original time I did Chaos Fanatic as well, but here's the whole loot tracker from the Fanatic and while I was doing it I checked uh, I was averaging 55 seconds per kill so we could maybe just round that to one minute per kill and then there's also the 30 second timer in between kills so on average that's 40 kills per hour of the Fanatic. So I finished at 161 KC which means it was a total of four hours at the Fanatic from start to finish across all my KCs. It's actually really funny that the drop rate is 1 out of 256, so I've gotten two D picks from Chaos Ellie below the drop rate. Oh, but not the pet. Never the pet, man. So unfair. And I end up doing another four hours of fishing today. I feel like I haven't updated you with the Karambon stacks for a while, so here's what they're at. 90k cooked and 61k raw. Uh, this was a fun little wilderness excursion kind of video, and uh, it's gotten me kind of hyped to do more wilderness bosses in the future. I didn't even see a single 
peek here the whole time throughout this whole video, but then again, I didn't really go to any of the crowded wildy bosses where people really PK at, so it kind of makes sense. Plus, a lot of time was spent during the off hours of the game. I'd like to try out some duo content in the wildy with Spook Dog in the next video, so whether that's going to be Scorpia or maybe the new wildy bosses in the multi versions, we'll see. Um, but with that said, make sure you check out her channel, which is linked below in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.